In the previous video, we added a single convolutional and pooling layer combo to our font classification model. Now let's take that a step further. In this video, we are going to add another convolutional layer to our model. Don't worry, we'll walk through the parameters to make sizing line up and we'll learn what dropout training is. As usual when starting a new model, make a fresh IPython session and execute the code up to numfilters1. Great, now you're all set to start learning. Let's jump into our convolutional model. Why don't we be ambitious and set the first convolutional layer to have 16 filters, far more than the four from our old model. But we'll use a smaller window size this time, just three by three. Also note that we changed some variable names like numfilters to numfilters1. This is because we're going to have another convolutional layer in just a moment, and we might want different number of filters on each. The rest of this layer is exactly as it was before. We convolve, then do two by two max pooling, and we use the rectified linear activation unit. Now we add another convolutional layer. Some models do several convolutions followed by a pooling layer, Others do one convolution, then one pooling, then one convolution, and so on. We're doing the latter here. Suppose you want four filters and a three by three window. This is easy to make weights for. The only big difference from the previous layer is that we now have many input channels. See num filters one there? That's because we have 16 input channels coming from the previous layer. If we had used num filters one equals eight, we'd have only eight input channels. Think of these as low-level features that we're going to build on. And remember, the number of channels and the input is like the number of colors. So if you want to think about it like that, that might help you. When we do the actual second convolutional layer, make sure to pass in the output from the first pooling layer, P1. Now, this can go into a new ReLU activation function followed by another pooling layer. As usual, we do two by two max pooling with a valid padding. Flattening the pooling output for a convolution follows the same process as the last model too. This time, however, we work on pooling output two, of course, getting its number of parameters from all its features and the window into one big vector. Now we insert a densely connected layer into our neural network, just like we've done in previous videos, just make sure to update the variable names. Now we see the same tf.nn.dropout that we used but didn't explain in the last model. Dropout is a way to temporarily cut a neuron out of our model. We do this during training to help avoid overfitting. Each batch, TensorFlow will pick different neuronal output at this connection layer to remove. This helps the model be robust in the face of small changes during training. The keep prob is the probability of keeping a particular neuron output. It's common to set this to 0.5 during training. And again, the final logistic regression layer and the training node code is all the same as before. You can execute that now. Now we can train our full convolutional neural net, the apex of our modeling thus far. This model can take several hours to train, so you might want to start it now before the next video. In this video, we implemented a deep convolutional neural net on a real problem. You're fully proficient with deep learning in TensorFlow. In the next video, we'll evaluate just how good this model is.